Hello and welcome to the channel Love Obstetrics and Gynecology. In today's video, we will learn about the clinical pelvic assessment, which is done firstly in the patients uh, that are primary gravida and have completed 37 weeks of gestation, or we can do this uh, in patients that are either primary or multi gravida in labor. Now, before we start with the procedure, we need to have following prerequisites that is we require one examination table. Uh, we need to ask the patient to empty her bladder before the examination, perform adequate hand hygiene and a sterile pair of gloves is required. Then after fulfilling all those prerequisites, we need to position the patient in the dorsal position with the patient at the edge of the table so her buttocks are at the edge of the table now we will clean the perineum with the savlon swab by just one stroke which is from above downwards and then we discard the swab now starting with the examination we need to be very sure that we are gentle throughout the procedure and we ask the patient to relax her perineum because if she keeps tight so we won't be able to assess the patient adequately starting with the examination uh, first we need to and uh, we need to do this with the uh, right hands two fingers that is the index finger and the middle finger and the thumb would stay outside so to introduce these fingers we require the ring finger and thumb to separate the labia so the labia gets separated by ring finger and the thumb and then we generally introduce our right hands index and middle finger and then we will go along the sacral curve right my thumb is outside my ring and index uh, sorry my middle and the index finger are inside the vagina and I will slide my fingers across the sacrum now I'll be going from downwards to above and in this movement, I will assess for the curvature of the sacrum. The sacrum is usually curved from above and below and side to side and the lower end should not point towards anteriorly, right? It is curved from above below and side to side and the lower part of the sacrum or the coccyx should not point anterior. This is a normal pelvis. Now if I want to reach the sacral promontory, it is actually reached with very great difficulty and I need to depress my arm significantly to the uh, below the uh, edge of the table so as to reach the sacral promontory and still uh, we might not be able to reach the sacral promontory. I can show you the lateral view. My fingers are not able to reach the sacral promontory. Right? And if I want to reach it, uh, I it would be with a very great difficulty by significantly depressing the arm. For reaching the sacral uh, promontory, like we slide our fingers all over the sacrum and then there will be a jutting forward of our fingers. Like there will be an anterior jutting forward of the fingers as we go over the sacrum and this is where our sacral promontory would be and it is reached with a very great difficulty or in a, a normal pelvis it is not reached and when it is not reached we actually say that the pelvic inlet is adequate. The next we measure is the diagonal conjugate. The diagonal conjugate is measured uh, when we reach the sacral promontory so the tip of the middle finger is at the sacral promontory and the right hand's index finger base is touching the lower border of the symphysis pubis so it is measured between those two now let's take it more uh, um, clearly so here i have my middle finger's tip at the sacral promontory and the index finger is in touch with the lower border of pubic symphysis pubis now with my left hand i'll mark on the right hand's base of the index finger and then i'll take my fingers out and we can measure from the tip of the middle finger with a scale from the mid tip of the middle finger to my marked point 
and this will be my diagonal conjugate now we have measured the diagonal conjugate we have seen the curvatures of the sacrum from above downward and side to side this was all about the pelvic inlet now next that we are going to examine is our pelvic cavity how are we going to examine this the pelvic cavity we look for the side walls now these side walls on both side they should be parallel they should not be convergent right converging is like this right converging Con not converging we require the pelvic side walls to be parallel to each other so in a normal pelvis we want our pelvic side walls to be parallel the next that we going to assess in this is the ischial spines and we are going to measure is the bispinous diameter now usually how we measure is we widely uh, we open the middle and the index finger wide apart and we are usually not able to touch both the spines simultaneously and when we are not able to do this we consider that the bispinous diameter is adequate right this is one ischial spine this is another ischial spine we are going to measure the bispinous diameter and as you can also see here i cannot uh, touch both the ischial spines simultaneously right also we look for whether these ischial spines are pointed or sharp towards inside or they are not palpable or they may be inverted 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 sharp or pointed inside like we assess for these and the bispinous diameter we feel for is sacrospinous ligament it arises from sacrum and it gets inserted on the ischial spine now above this ligament we must be able to admit our two fingers so this is we assess also the sacro sciatic notch and that admits the two fingers palpated above the sacro spinous ligament there is a ligament over here and we should be able to admit the two fingers here and simultaneously on the other side also we assess sacro spinous ligament and two fingers should be admitted in this sacro sciatic notch in the pelvic cavity there are three important points that is we assess for the pelvic side walls that need to be parallel to each other we feel for the ischial spine on both sides right and then we for see for this bispinous diameter and the sacro sciatic notch that should admit at least two fingers the next we assess is the pelvic outlet so for pelvic outlet i'll get my fingers more lower in the vagina and i'll feel for the subcubic arc and the subcubic angle so this is my subcubic arc which is usually curved and this is my subcubic angle which should admit at least two finger breadth so here i am able to admit my two finger breadth in the subcubic angle the next we assess is the transverse diameter of outlet or intertuberous diameter so i measure it by my hands i make it, uh, make it make a fist of it and my four knuckles should be able to get admitted in the intertuberous diameter so my hands are completely outside the vagina right now and i am pressing upon the patient's perineum and between this two these two tuberosities i should be able to admit my four knuckles right this is my tdo so in this assessment that you have seen is that we simultaneously from above downward keep on assessing the pelvic inlet the cavity and the outlet so to summarize all of these first we had was a pelvic inlet so i went all across i assessed for the sacrum the sacral curvature i reached the sacral promontory and then we took the diagonal conjugate and then we came to assess our pelvic cavity that had was the pelvic side walls and then further the ischial spines and then the sacro sciatic notch and then coming more down towards the outlet 
द सब प्यूबिक आर्क एंड द सब प्यूबिक एंगल एंड फाइनली द इंटर ट्यूबरस डायमीटर थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग द वीडियो